of the flood for those that want to believe it. The other theories they teach about mammoths in colleges cannot explain why a mammoth would be in that position standing up, why its bones are broken, why it has food still undigested in its, in its stomach. Uh, just the heat of a mammoth body would digest its stomach contents within a few hours. But if it's surrounded by very cold, coming from space water, it would cool that body off and preserve it for the next thousand years. People who argue against Dr. Brown's theory say, and say that the frozen mammoths are all after the flood of Noah, they'll say, if it was frozen in ice, the ice would float, ice floats. Well, ice floats if ice is ice. <laughs> this is dirty ice. And it could have had other sediments on top. So during the flood, this ice could have been down on bedrock, this dirty ice sunk with the mammoths down in dirty ice and stayed there while the flood waters were over the whole surface. And then you say, well, the, the waters would have melted all the ice. Uh, wouldn't have melted, didn't melt all the ice because it's there. It's hard to argue against the fact that the thing died standing up and, and it just wouldn't happen during any natural storm post-flood. This was a major cataclysmic, otherwise unexplainable event for this mammoth. So as we discussed, he was in a southern latitude at the time because Dr. Brown theorizes that the original North Pole was about right here in Asia. And so the Earth was like this, which means that the mammoths were in a, in a, a latitude that would have allowed them to live. And then the Earth rolled and put them into uh, a latitude that kept them frozen over the years. And so over the years, as the Ice Age has gone away consistently, <laughs> And Dr. Brown says, I am wrong in my theory. If you ever find a frozen mammoth, especially the standing up ones, which there aren't that many, but there's this one, if there were fossils directly underneath them, then it would obviously be after the flood. Now, people will say, well, there was fossils in the area of these mammoths. That doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they're in the area because they could have been in the sedimentary layer washed in as the floodwaters were going all over. And then when the ice is melting, they could have been in the area. The issue is they have to be directly below frozen mammoths for his theory to be, um, to be wrong. The waters and carbon dioxide of the great deep erupted with such force that must have, much of it reached space, froze, returned to freeze and bury living animals. They've also found, during blowing a, to make road construction, they found fish frozen in a river in the act of swimming. You know, this stuff falls down from space and flash freezes a small stream with, with, ice, with fish in it and they're frozen in the act of swimming. 50 wild oxen were found in a herd run. They're, they're running along, and they just saw these heads of the, of the herd of these oxen, and they start digging down, and they find out they all died standing up, running in a herd. As the water escapes, as the water escapes below the crust, the pillars would have been breaking off, been going out with the water towards the crack, and uh, comets would have been formed. What it says in Job is he removes the mountains and they do not know when he overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth out of its place and its pillars tremble. You know, the earth would have been shaking out of its place and rolling. By the way, the Bible says in the last days the earth is going to roll again. That it's going to reel like a top and be like a drunkard and we're going to see that crustal changes are going to be coming in the future. The escaping supercritical water contained enough energy to launch comets and asteroids into space, as we've been mentioning. And I know that's hard to fathom, but it's just physics. <laughs> you got enough energy to do it, it launches, it's there, and then it's going to do its thing. Billions of tons of crust are being eroded and deposited as sediments bearing trees, plants, and animals globally. <laughs> Look at that guy. He, he got buried before he finished lunch. And, and this is this is a real life fossil. This isn't, uh, and this other guy had just eaten lunch. Not even done eating the fish. Boom, he's being buried. And by the way, fossils only occur when something is rapidly buried and compressed and the oxygen's gone. That's the only way. And it's global and it's, it's massive. And the, the erosion of the crack would have caused it to occur. Uh, here's a tree still planted. Uh, would have been in an area where the shock wave didn't knock it down, so it's, it's far enough away from the crack of the crust that it's still standing straight up, not like Mount St. Helens that blew over all those trees. And so it's still standing up, 
and the, and the evolutionists, if you didn't have the tree there, the evolutionists would look at all the layers of strata that are in this picture and go, oh yeah, billions of years or, or millions of years of strata. Well, that's quite a tree that can grow for millions of years up through all the strata. And those are found all over the world. The evolutionary geology fairy tale is just that. It's, it's a lie. And it's something that our children have to be equipped with. And how are they equipped? By knowing the, how the flood of Noah occurred. And say, that's garbage. And you can go to your professors and point these things out. And the continental slope would have been formed as the waters were jettisoning out, eroding the continental slope. Every continent that's located to where the crack was uh, would have created slopes and continental shelves. Uh, chapter 7, verse 17 of Genesis. Now the, the flood, the global rainfall, was on the earth 40 days. But the fountains lost power as the crust is, is crushing down. The fountain is losing power, plus it's going through more water, and the crack is widening. But the Bible says that the waters continue to prevail on the earth for another until a total of 150 days. So it, we, we have to get into our mind, it wasn't just 40 days and 40 nights of rain. It was 40 days and 40 nights where it rained all over the earth. Then it stopped raining all over the earth, but the waters continued to go up until a total of 150 days, the water increase stopped. So what was the condition at that 150 days? The average sedimentary thickness on the earth is one mile. The average thickness of sediment on the earth is one mile, eroded from this, what used to be just a narrow crack is now an eroded crack of a total of 800 miles uh, by theory. There's still a little bit of water underneath the crust, and we'll see the importance of that next week. But the crust has been eroded. The, this crust is pushing down on the mantle here with much greater force than the water is pushing down there, which is going to cause the mantle to pop up into this crack, creating the mid-oceanic ridge. This is the condition, and Noah's boat is, Noah's boat's floating right here, and it says that, and the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered, because they weren't that high in the first place. And actually, the high hills in the first place were the, were the weak areas, or the not thick areas of the crust that had bowed up, but now the heavy parts of the crust have been broken, the pillars have been broken, which would have pushed those up. So in other words, the pre-flood 5,000 foot mountains would have gone back down. The earth would have been basically nearly flat. And if you have a nearly flat earth, it's easy to flood it. And the waters prevailed 15 cubits, which is 22 and a half feet, above the highest mountain. The Bible says, unless you're over 23 feet high, you don't have any place, you know, everything's dead. You have no place to go. And uh, for 150 days, the waters increased and lifted, and all flesh died that moved on the earth, Birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, all that was on the dry land died. <laughs> now, there's people that say, well, it, wasn't, it doesn't really mean all died. I don't know. How, how much more does God have to say that 